Introduction to Exchange Server 2003. The latest version of Microsoft's email server system is Exchange 2003. Exchange 2003 perhaps isn't a quantum leap from what Exchange 2000 had to offer, but it does introduce some really nice features and some great improvements on those features that didn't quite work well in Exchange 2000. Now before we start installing Exchange 2003 and seeing what it has to offer, we first need to ensure that we have a server that meets the requirements for Exchange. To run Exchange 2003 properly, you're going to need a system that's running Windows 2003 Server or Windows 2000 Server with Service Pack 3 or higher. And if you plan on running the Enterprise Edition of Exchange 2003, you'll need the Enterprise or Data Edition of Windows 2003 Server. And if you want to run the Standard Edition of Exchange, you can use any edition of Windows 2003. Now the minimum CPU must be at least a 133 MHz. Now in reality this is a pathetic minimum. Shoot for at least a 1 GHz processor if you want to expect any sort of performance from your Exchange server. Now as far as RAM goes, Microsoft state you need 256 megs of RAM. Now I'd recommend you have at least 512, but given the price of RAM nowadays you should really pop at least a gig of RAM in your Exchange system. Now to install Exchange itself, you're going to need at least 200 megs of free disk space on your system drive and 500 megs free on the drive where you plan to install Exchange. Again, and it probably goes without saying, these are minimums, plan to have a lot more disk space than this. Now before we start the actual installation of Exchange 2003, you're going to need to have a Windows 2000 or Windows 2003 server installed at least as a member server. Now we're not going to install that server as part of this video series, we'll start with a pre-installed generic Windows 2003 installation. Also I don't recommend you place your Exchange server on a domain controller, however there's no problem with you actually doing that, but the reason I don't recommend it is that your domain controller, especially in a large enterprise, is already overworked, and the last thing it needs is a demanding application like Exchange dropped on top of it. In a smaller organization where you might only have one or two servers, you can certainly install your server this way if you feel you have to. Alright, well enough talking about it, let's move on to the next video and we'll start installing Exchange Server 2003.